Good evening, everybody. Last night I was, a made, uh, I was made aware of a further situation involving Stuart Nash. In September last year, acting as the local MP for Napier, he contacted a senior official at MB to ask them to look at an immigration case of a health professional in his electorate. In, do, in doing so, he did not use the established process for ministers and MPs to advocate in immigration cases. Stuart Nash has assured me that there is no personal or other connection between him and the person in his electorate in question. He was only intervening to ensure his electorate did not lose a much-needed health professional. Nevertheless, there is a well-established process and channel for ministers and MPs to advocate on immigration cases. The Cabinet manual is very clear that ministers should bear in mind that they have the capacity to exercise considerable influence over the public service. I want to be clear that I think the public servants involved in these cases have acted appropriately. This latest instance, though, does demonstrate a pattern of behaviour which does not reach the standard that I expect from ministers. It's clear in his pattern of behaviour that Stuart is not acting to achieve personal gain from his actions. The cases in question represent more of his desire to get things done in his portfolios and on behalf of his communities. Stuart does, on occasion, speak in a more colloquial manner that reflects the sentiments of many people in the community. But he does need to take greater care to ensure that what he says and how he says it upholds the uh, standards expected of a cabinet minister. We have processes and rules in place for a reason, and in part that's to avoid the sorts of questions that Stuart is now facing. Having considered the thresholds used by previous Prime Ministers, I've decided that an appropriate penalty is to demote Stuart Nash and to place him on a final warning. Stuart will move to the bottom of the Cabinet rankings at number 20. This demotion reflects both his poor judgment on process and his failure to alert me to these past instances. I've repeated that point to him and made it very clear that any further future lapses will result in his dismissal as a minister. As I have said, his actions reflect poor judgment, but the specifics of each instance do not warrant dismissal from his ministerial post altogether. Doesn't his 